Me and anime have had a rocky relationship to say the least. Now, to be fair to anime, I've never woken up the night after to find a steaming hot pile of shit in the bed next to me. Usually, all I get after spending the night with the saucer-eyed seductress is the profound feeling of shame and disappointment. Despite my previous claims about the subject, I don't actually hate all anime. Just 99.9999999% of it. But once in a blue moon, I do get recommended an anime that I end up really liking, or at least not outright hating. Witch Hunter Robin being one such show, but also a slight exception to this rule, as no one ever recommended it to me. The first time I ever saw Witch Hunter Robin was an experience many of us had with anime growing up. One night, after eating several dozen bags of Cheetos, drinking two two liters of soda, and snorting several rails of the finest Colombian pixie stick dust off the family ottoman, I proceeded in my sugar-induced haze to black out on the couch. Only to awaken in the dead of night, to discover that Cartoon Network had become Adult Swim, and that Ed, Ed and Eddie had been replaced with a strange, dark and brooding show. And ever since that fateful night, Witch Hunter Robin has maintained a firm place in my mental media to possibly consume before I die list. But after 20 years and like 4 tries, I finally did it. I finished the show. And, you know what? I liked it. I liked it a lot. For several reasons, but the best way I can put it is that Witch Hunter Robin has a severe lack of what I like to call Kawaii Moshi Bullshit. Now, Kawaii Moshi Bullshit can stem from several different things, but it mainly comes from the vast cultural gap that separates us here in the land of guns, fast food, and out of control inflation from those octopus eating, sake swilling, idol worshipping, overworked office men across the Pacific. What the Japanese find cute, we often find nightmare inducing. What we find cringy and unbearable, the Japanese find cool and stoic. Fish swim, birds fly, and the Japanese export their subpar culture to the rest of the world through subpar media. And you know what? I don't blame them. Some things are just an irrefutable fact of life, like the sun rising, communism always failing, and CD Projekt Red being a bunch of talentless hacks who have never ever made a good video game. No, not even that one. But I digress. Witch Hunter Robin is the type of anime I wish we got more of. One that has the atmospheric and storytelling sensibilities of a more western TV show, but with the stylistic and conceptual mixing the Japanese are known for. You see, I do not hate Japanese media. I hate bad media. American, French, Russian, Spanish, Polish, doesn't matter if it's good. It's good. If it's shit, it's shit. But thanks to the combined powers of anime and autism, bad Japanese media often gets a pass. And it shouldn't. You shouldn't lower your standards or not hold something up to a fair level of criticism just because you happen to simp for the country it's from. That is how you end up with an industry that turns out an endless procession of unoriginal, cringy, low effort, and incomplete shows season after season, year after year. So I implore you, take off the fanboy goggles, but for a minute, and hold the feet of the creators of this trash to the fucking flames and tell them to do better next time or risk being burned at the stake. And speaking of burning people at the stake, we got a show about witches to review. So buckle the fuck up, boys, because here we go. I thought that according to Amon's report, there were 50 dolls in the place. Oh yeah? Then what happened to the other one? Hey, you never know. It could still be out there running around. But that wouldn't make any sense. The witch died, right? She certainly did. Your ears do not deceive you. I do watch all of my anime dubbed whenever I can. And that is because thanks to years and years of playing shitty JRPGs, I am immune to all of but the shittiest of voice acting. And whenever watching anything in a foreign language, you should always try the dub first if it's available, because if not, you're going to be stuck with your eyes glued to the bottom third of the screen as opposed to watching the entirety of the screen. And since anime is a visual medium, 
what happens on screen is as important, if not more important, than the words that are spoken and how they are said. But whoever said weeaboos were smart. So after watching all of Witch Hunter Robin in English, I am pleased to report that the dub is fucking outstanding. You have the usual big names for early 2000s anime, Crispin Freeman as Amon, Johnny Young Bosch as Sakaki, James Price as Zizen, and they all do a great job, as you'd suspect. Even the lesser named voice actors in the show do a pretty damn good job. It's a very solid dub, and you should check it out as opposed to just defaulting to the subtitles. Dojima, the chief's in a bad mood. Good luck. You really don't have a clue, do you? Hope you have fun out there, guys. Miss Dojima! <laughs> the show is set in a world much like our own, where witches live among us in secret. Some people carry within their DNA a witch gene that through stress, trauma, or just plain old bad luck can activate, turning some poor unlucky fuck into a witch. Kinda like a genetic ticking time bomb. The show refers to people with unawakened witch genes as seeds, and once awakened to their powers, a seed quickly becomes a witch and rapidly loses their humanity, ultimately becoming a sadistic, unempathetic monster that feels no emotions or remorse and also gaining access to paranormal powers the show refers to as The Craft. The Craft can give you access to several different types of powers, from pyromancy and telekinesis to the more mundane and specialized, like sacrificing one person's life to heal someone else, and psychometry, a power that lets you feel the emotions or memories from spaces or objects. Witches are obviously a threat to humanity, so, in line with the long and proud tradition of centuries past, a mysterious group named Solomon stations teams of hunters around the world to mercilessly track and righteously execute witches as they awaken. And it is one such Solomon hunter team that Witch Hunter Robin focuses on, the STN J. Our main heroine is Robin Senna, a craft user sent to the STN J as a replacement after one of the STNJ's hunters was found dead under very mysterious circumstances. The STNJ itself is staffed by a surprisingly likable cast of characters. You got the dark and brooding team leader Amon, the professional and motherly Karasuma, Sakaki, the young hotshot with something to prove, Michael fills the mandatory slacker hacker role that every late 90s early 2000s show seemingly had. You also have the grim and serious hard-ass director Zizen, and the perpetually late to work but it doesn't really matter because my parents own the company, the lazy and loudmouth Dojima. It's a shame that the cast is so likable, because most of them get barely any screen time. The show mainly focuses on Robin, Amon, and maybe a little bit of Dojima by the end. The show is best described as a paranormal procedural crime drama, kind of like NCIS but with magic. And you'd imagine a show about modern day magic wielding gun toting witch hunters and their battle against the powerful evil monsters would have some pretty fucking sick fight scenes, but sadly 90% of all the action kinda just sucks. But honestly I might be judging the fight scenes just a little bit too harshly. They are on par for early 2000s anime, maybe even above average. See, Witch Hunter Robin isn't an action show, it's a mystery. It sacrifices its potential action sequences in order to maintain a deliberately somber pace and a horror atmosphere. And that would be all well and good, but it never fully capitalizes on the atmosphere. So what we are left with is a moody, melancholic show with largely crap fight scenes and no scares. Despite having a slower and more westernly approach to storytelling, Witch Hunter Robin still has its kawaii moshi bullshit moments, but they are thankfully few and far between. The worst being a scene when two of the main characters are fleeing for their lives with a hit squad of tactical P90 wielding special ops soldiers hot on their heels, only for one of them to stop mid-escape because they just need to know if the other one sees them as a real senpai or not or some other bullshit. I've mentioned before that Witch Hunter Robin has a very slow pace. I found it refreshing since most anime, then and now, is just a bunch of ADHD and autism filled nonsense. The problem is, Witch Hunter Robin is too slow. 
The first six episodes are fucking glacial. And for once, I'm only being slightly hyperbolic. The first six episodes of Witch Hunter Robin are some of the slowest, most boring episodes of television I have ever seen in my goddamn life. I had tried several times over the years, like four or five times, to actually sit down and watch the show. And I always dropped it around episode five or six out of just unfathomable boredom. Boredom that is only compounded by the early episodes following a very formulaic Witch of the Week type format. Where there is no mystery at all to the witch that they're hunting, you know who they are from the beginning of the episode, and of course they're gonna get them because they're the fucking STNJ, it's their job. This lack of mystery means that this procedural crime drama has no procedural crime work. They know who the witches are, they find them, they drank them, they send them off to the factory. This complete lack of mystery damages the early episodes greatly, and has probably turned off thousands of people from actually finishing the show in the past two decades. These six episodes of distilled monotony do turn out to be important, however, as they not only set up the characters and their relationships to each other, but also clue the viewer into key information that might not seem obvious or important at first, but it is by the time the ending comes around. It's not anything special or amazing by itself, but for anime, it's borderline Shakespeare. But thankfully around episode 7, the show starts to pick up, when it starts playing with the Witch of the Week type formula in fun and creative ways. And playing with the formula does wonders for the show. It's still very slow, but much less boring. It's amazing what actually having mystery and drama in your paranormal procedural mystery crime drama show can do. By the time episode 12 rolled around, I was hooked. At this point, the show completely drops the Witch of the Week type template, and instead focuses on a main plot and a central mystery. Meanwhile, the ending is somehow both a cool and fitting conclusion, while also being unsatisfying as hell and leaving the door wide open for potential sequels that sadly never came. I honestly don't know if I'm more impressed or disappointed by the show's ending but it's not anywhere near bad enough to keep me from recommending the show. I do recommend it. If anything, the ending just leaves me wanting more, but it's been 20 years, so I doubt we'll ever get a continuation. The world outside the STNJ and its headquarters is depicted as normal early 2000s Japan in all of its pake and sake field glory. But inside the STNJ's gothic manor, technology becomes a surreal mix of Panzer Dragoon, early 2000s futurism, and a late, almost 1800s steampunk aesthetic. For example, Robin's computer mouse in this scene, or Michael's cool fold-out keyboard in this one. Even the fashion is a schizophrenic mess, with most of the ST and J wearing normal modern day clothing, only donning an edgy but admittedly badass futuristic black coat when out on hunts. Amon and Robin, however, both dress like they're fucking time travelers, with Robin wearing a dress that is something straight out of the 1800s, and Amon sporting a stylish black doublet, like some sort of Venetian merchant prince. The show being made in the early 2000s leads me to assume that it was mostly hand animated, but it uses what appears to be pre-rendered CGI backdrops for some of the scenes. They probably blended in better back in 2002, but today, they just kind of stick out. But I do like them though. They give the show a type of PS1 JRPG vibe that I personally really dig. The thing that keeps the show's atmosphere intact over the entirety of its runtime, and also makes its clashing visual styles work, is its OST. Because the OST is fucking amazing! It is hands down the best part of the show. It is so good that it manages to do the seemingly impossible. It unifies the show's eclectic visual style through a soundscape that combines traditional folk music with orchestral instruments, electric guitar, and synth. Throw in a splash of the almighty Silent Hill, 
And the result is not only a show that has the mood and atmosphere that invokes the historical witch hunts that inspired it, but also the early 2000s and all of its silk shirt, frosted tip, pop punk majesty. The music flips effortlessly, from horror-tinged dirges to upbeat battle music, all while keeping a consistent overall tone of oppressive bleakness, of torch-lit witch hunts and midnight car chases. I could go on for hours and still not overstate just how amazing the soundtrack is. Without it, Witch Hunter Robin's style debatably doesn't even exist. It just goes to show the importance of music and sound design when enhancing a visual medium. The soundtrack is a brilliant mix of old and new, of sadness and adrenaline, so I give my sincerest praise to the composer, Taku Iwasaki. Phenomenal work, my man. Phenomenal work. In the early episodes, I found myself comparing Witch Hunter Robin to two other anime I like, or at least tolerate, those shows being Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex and Psychopaths. And it is easy to see why. Like Witch Hunter Robin, both Ghost in the Shell and Psychopaths have a case of the week like structure, albeit in varying degrees. And all three shows operate as procedural crime dramas set in a fictional but fairly grounded world, with a severe but not total lack of kawaii moshi bullshit. That is, until the show's halfway mark, when the thoughts of Ghost in the Shell and Psychopaths were joined in my mind by a third anime, an even more overrated anime. An anime with giant fucking robots. Now, comparing Witch Hunter Robin to Evangelion might seem odd at first, but as you will quickly see, it's not without some merit. And no, it has nothing to do with the studio that animated Witch Hunter Robin being Sunrise, the same studio that makes Gundam, I swear. Both shows follow a very similar plot trajectory over the course of their three acts. Both start out with a highly episodic Monster of the Week type format, with character and world building sprinkled in. And then around the halfway point, the other shoe drops, and the Episode of the Week type format is replaced with a main plot. The final act of each show, for Evangelion it's the movie, deals with the main protagonist's faction getting into a pissing match with their parent organization. In Witch Hunter Robin, it's the STNJ that gets into it with Solomon HQ, and in Ava, it's Nerve that ends up fighting Sele. Now, me pointing out that the shows have the same narrative structure isn't exactly a galaxy brain observation on my part. Plenty of stories have used similar plot setups before, but what I do find more interesting and slightly more big brained is the thematic similarities the shows have. Both shows use Christian and occult symbology and iconography, but in reverse. Now I personally have never dug too deep into the witchcraft parts of occultism, since I figured at best, if witchcraft is just a whole bunch of hocus pocus, then I'd end up looking like a retard after trying to summon a succubus in the woods during a full moon, naked, covered in goat's blood, with a deer skull on my head. And at worst, if witchcraft was real, I'd lose my soul to Satan and spend an eternity burning in a lake of fire. So the whole thing just seems like a lose-lose to me, so I never dug too deep into occultism outside of its interesting connections to UFOs and aliens. So with that disclaimer out of the way, Evangelion has a lot of Christian references and symbology, but uses it very inaccurately. Ava's use of occultism is much more accurate, but it also uses it much more sparingly. It's still a far cry from being 100% accurate as far as I can tell, but it is handled better than the Christian ones at least. Meanwhile, Witch Hunter Robin, despite being a show about hunting witches for an organization that has some form of a connection to the Catholic Church, doesn't actually make use of a whole lot of Christian imagery, but when it does use it, it is done so very accurately to a point. See, the show understandably has a big focus on the occult, but as far as I can tell, with my limited knowledge of occultism, the witchcraft in Witch Hunter Robin is handled so poorly, it doubles back around and damages the show's portrayal of Christianity. 
We have no reason to assume that Christianity is any different in Witch Hunter Robin's world than it is in ours. So if it is the same, then it is strange that a team of witch hunters would use witchcraft to help them hunt witches. They instead should be using the power of prayer and asking JC above to lend a hand in battle. Because in proper Christian lore, you get magical powers like the ability to control fire by selling your soul to the fucking devil. But then again, what did you expect from a show made by a bunch of godless Japs? There is a late show reveal that even further damages Witch Hunter Robin's portrayal of Christianity and occultism even further, but to elaborate upon it would require me to spoil all 26 episodes of the show, and I don't want to spoil them, because I want you to watch them. Regardless of how I've come off in this video, I rather enjoyed Witch Hunter Robin. It's not a perfect show, not with those early episodes, but it's good enough for anime. Me bitching about the poor use of Christianity and occultism in the show should not be taken as a negative. I just found it interesting how it mirrors Ava while using similar themes and symbology, but in reverse. And we all know how I like to rant and rave like a schizophrenic madman on the internet. The show's lack of kawaii moshi bullshit is refreshingly nice, but what really makes me enjoy the show is that it doesn't insult your intelligence as much as other anime. Witch Hunter Robin assumes that you are smart enough to not need a constant reminder of key events in the story, to not need the characters to blurt out their feelings for each other every episode. It assumes you can recall small details or minor events that happened in previous episodes without the need to re-explain them or point them out. But if you are one of those retarded weeaboos with crippling ADHD and a complete lack of any and all social skills, then I'm sorry to say you'll probably hate the show and think it's boring. Hell, I barely made it through those first six episodes. So if you look at Witch Hunter Robin and are turned off by the surplus of fully clothed women and the lack of Lolly and Shotokan, I implore you to at least give the soundtrack a listen to, because it fucking slaps. But if your tastes line up with mine, I say give Witch Hunter Robin a watch. I ended up liking the show way more than I ever thought I would, just keep your expectations in check. It's still an anime after all, and even the best of anime is still irredeemable trash. My only regret is that it took me 20 years to finish the damn thing.